everybody it's smooth of source back the fuck outside we are tuning in for another episode of source we are in midtown new york with the one and only we got pretty cartier on source set we brought her all the way to new york she touched down and got right to sit in with smooth how, yeah. how was your trip how was your transport Man, everything was straight, you feel what I'm saying, man. It's good to be in the city, good to be around good people. So. Okay. She came with the fly shit on. She put that yeah. shit on. She touched yeah. down and got right to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotta respect it. You feel me? Coming from the South, you feel me? Y'all definitely put that shit on. You feel me? But Love. nah, Love. for real. Love too. For real. It's a different type of fashion sense when you go down south. So I gotta respect it. You feel me? Appreciate Listen, I step into another step. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta give it up. That's so I fuck with you. Exactly. Nah, I appreciate it. You feel exactly. me? You just you gotta give credit when credit is due um so what brings you to new york you're only here for a quick weekend but feel me tell us why you're here yeah we out here just handling business and shit you know what i'm saying on the other side so right you know we had to definitely come and still touch with you like i said man gotta get music in it's the doer for me yeah man okay gotta, um, gotta give an alley and a quick shout out um to jazz the icon jazz you feel me i love her to pieces i have yet to meet jazz but you know we're pretty good mutuals and um cartier had tweeted something about touching down in new york and tapping in and she immediately sourced me right into that. So, of course, I got to, you know, give my love and my salutations. Uh, that's my family. Love you forever. Um, so, I want to do some icebreakers, if that's okay with you. Just yeah. so we can get the room. You feel me? Cool, calm, and collective. <laughs> um, quick five questions. Ooh, okay. Just five. five. Ain't nothing too crazy. Okay, five was crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> you want three? I can give no, you no, three. No, 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 no. All right, so first question, uh, fall or, no, nah, I'm going to say spring or fall fashion. Hmm, fall. Okay, dinner or breakfast? Breakfast. Mm, freestyling or writing? Writing. Naps or energy drinks? Naps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. West Coast or East Coast? West Coast. Okay, and why? Production. Okay. Who are your favorite producers out there? What are your favorite production pieces from the West Coast? Um, I'm gonna say uh, shout out to K Fisher right now, man. He uh one of Larry June producers, man. Fire. Fire. Shout out to J One Hundred right now. Uh, Cardo got wings. He another one who I really fuck with. Um, but just just as far as just like that bounce, man. Like yeah. them bass sims. Um, just that that bounce that they got to that shit. Man. For sure. They got one with that. Yeah. So Especially, I feel like when I'm listening to your music, and we're gonna talk about your music in a minute. Right. But when I feel like I listen to your music, I feel like I can picture myself cruising in LA or even a Cali in general but with the bounce you feel me yeah. like there's certain sounds out there where we don't specifically have it on the upper east especially in New York we got you know we got our drill sound but in the west coast and down south y'all got that bounce y'all got the hydraulics like it all makes sense yeah. you feel me like it's a feel that we just cruise and we chilling you feel me like right. it's smooth shit so um I would love to know like what influences you picking your beats because your beats don't you told me the other day that your second most listened to area is New York. Yeah. And to me, that's crazy. I, you know, like, I was really shocked by that because we don't really... That's not our sound up here. You feel right. me? Like, your your sound is very different from what we're used to. So, like, how does that process go? Um, I think that it's really just a matter of the instrumentation. Like, okay. I like beats with uh, realistic instrumentation, even if it might have been created, like, a different way. But if it has, like, realistic piano keys or... um different chords or you know just something that really gives you that live like yeah. feeling i think and i think new york is used to that yeah you know what i'm saying like new york y'all are known for you know like the underground scene live bands in the underground scene yeah. like y'all ear already tuned to that yeah you know, even when them boy came out with hip-hop it was live. you know what i'm saying it was really live yeah. you know what i'm saying then it then niggas started putting on, on wax you know what yeah. i mean so I think that's really uh, what draw draw uh, people to it, and, and like naturally, you know, niggas from up here already fuck with down south, like mm -hmm. slang or, you know, what I'm saying the way we rap or whatever, like that is starting to become accustomed to y'all too. So I just felt like when it was the second most, it was surprising, but it was like shit that makes sense that makes because sense. you know what I'm saying, like y'all used to it, but it was just like then it, you know, she kind of put it a little different, like I'm fucking yeah. with it. So it was cool. Well, we gonna get you out here more because yeah. cause this we need this a lot more. You yeah. feel me? We need to get you on some live venues. You feel me? It's it's important to be in these rooms, especially if this is your second most listened place. We can make it your first. You yeah, feel yeah. me? Shit smells like wildfire up here, so yeah. we could definitely make that shit happen. You know, fingers crossed. In twenty twenty three, you won't be out here five times as much yeah. as you are now. You feel me? <laughs> That'd be crazy. We gonna get you outside. That's hard. Yeah, I'm super sure. excited for that, and I and I love the fact that 
you know, your sound is so different from what we're used to because, I mean, we just play it right now in a room full of people and you got the live feedback. You yeah. feel me? From yeah. the from the first experience, listen, you feel me? And everybody's like, oh, shit, like, was, you feel me? Yeah. Like, that shit's very important. So, um, no, yeah, we definitely gonna make that happen. You feel That's me? I got you. I got you when it comes to that. Appreciate that. Um, so let's talk about your latest project, mm-hmm. Highly Flammable. Yeah. Why that title? Um, what's crazy is that when I first started this year off, I had already chose all the project like titles. Mm. Okay. You know, I had already knew how many projects I was dropping this year and what the titles was gonna be. I didn't know how life was gonna be going. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> um, you know, pretty much like it was already chosen, um, and I just kind of was like, however I feel in that moment, whatever project is up on deck, that's what we gonna um, go with. So like my last project was called Stay Activated. Mm-hmm. And I just had, you know what I'm saying, the third quarter was a hump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a it was a rough third quarter as far as a lot of people. So it really was a necessary project, not only for my growth, but I think that people um, you know, my fans like fuck with too. So like I just had a lot going on and, and just making that project was fire and then coming through the storm and then now it's like like okay, like I'm showing niggas like you just need it's that one flick. Now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You need that one flick to get lit. You know I what I mean? It. So that's really what I want to um showcase on this shit and really show niggas like I can really have like a whole fuck a lane, like the highway. Facts. You know I what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I got the highway, you know what I'm saying? I got three, four, five lanes <laughs> on, one, on one highway. You know what I'm talking about? I definitely hear that. That's nah, really what it was that's, about. Yeah, it's for sure. But, Talk to us about your cover art because feel me. I, I get some inspiration from Snoop up there, and that's just, you know, that's just me off a of first second, third glance. I'm like, there has to be some incorporation, but I would love for you to elaborate on that. You know, what's so crazy is that, um, that really wasn't, I really wanted to go with, like, a, like, me on a cover type mm-hmm. shit and really give a realistic cover, and then I ended up, you know, couldn't put the pieces together on it, and I said, um, you know, like, I got my own clothing brand and shit, right. so I was like, you know, I'm thinking on the merch end now. Like now, we got to sell the, the the project another way since we didn't do it from a strategic musical right. way with the cover. It's like okay, we know merch gonna be with it. Let's go ahead and give it the cartoon Cardi. And like people was already familiar with the cartoon Cardi shit, so it's like, you know, put her in the bed right. and sit it ain't on fire. That's just fire. You know what I'm saying? And then you know we kind of come up with a color scheme. So shout out to Quan Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Like she do all my merch uh, for fire. Orange Cardi and for me. So. Shout out. She fire, man. We came came up with that shit, and then when we put it out there, everybody was like, "Oh, that shit!" Dang. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so hard, <laughs> it man. definitely sets the tone. You feel me? And I like the fact that you know sometimes people have cover arts that don't match the title or like don't match the sound of it, just yeah. for like kind of like an attention thing or like a conversation starter. You feel me? So it's sometimes understandable, but like yours is perfectly in tune. You yeah. feel me? Like I think that's just that's just gas. So I definitely got to give you salutations on that because yeah. you know some people don't invest into that you feel me some people don't think about that so Love. yes all right so next thing i definitely want to ask about is who produced it like how how did that process go um how how does your let me say this let me rephrase that because there's seven there's seven songs on there yeah it's you know it's a nice smooth little low vibe how did picking those beats go i just like search around as much as i can like you know what i'm saying like different soul and funk producers if i can find them like you know instagram or some shit like Fire. that like the normal like just like how everybody else do like youtube like yeah. however you can you know put your ear on the whatever whatever um so that's really kind of how i found some niggas you know what i'm saying but i knew I, I knew what sound i wanted to go for you know what i mean so it was just more about like um we just gonna keep hearing a collection of sounds keep hearing a collection of sounds and we want to make sure that we like you said making the project cohesive so um i'm, a, I'm not really too in tune with the producers like that it was kind of just finding their shit um, you know, purchasing the beat and just going from there. I mean, to me, I feel like it's it's like a fifty fifty with me because I do feel like artists and producers there should be that one bond. You feel me, where they just kind of go together and they make magic for the rest of their careers. You right. feel me? Um, because I am learning as you know, time is continuing that they sign that duo and when it comes to these labels, you feel me? Yeah. But I also think on the other side of the spectrum, you know, searching and going on YouTube and Instagram and finding these beats, you make more connections that way. Right. You feel me? And then it's like, now y'all can create together. Now you have three, four, five different producers that you can build that bond with. You feel me? Right. I think that shit's fire. And the fact that more than one person can create the sound that you're looking for, that's even more beneficial. You right. feel me? Like, I was like, oh shit, now what else can we do together? Like, how else can I tweak your ear? Or like, you know, get in your brain to make this certain sound. You feel me? So I think that shit... 
it's beneficial. I think that shit's fire. And mm-hmm. you feel me? It's just it's just more love to be spread. Yeah, I think that um, what it really is is that like as you're a growing artist, you don't really have a sound. Like, you yeah. can go on YouTube and it's how you got certain type beats. Yeah. There's no pretty Cartier type beats. Like <laughs> yeah. That. So yeah. you got to go and make that type of music for niggas that didn't get their ear on it. Even, you know, so that's how I, I kind of feel like it's hard now, like, to um, get with a producer or whatever. Like, back then, I feel like niggas was making their sound together. Okay. But now that there's so many artists, like, in the fold, you got to really create your sound first, have niggas get hip to it, and then kind of like what Metro Boomin do. Where? Like, how, like that project he just dropped, it was like, he kind of got hip to what, like, a Don Tolliver or a Trap right. do. Right. Because he's really an Atlanta nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But him really kind of tweaking his shit, he had very versatile beats on his shit for specific artists. But them artists had to make that shit yeah. with another nigga first. You get what I'm that's saying? That's foundation. Yeah, so I think that's really still where we at, where niggas is um, still getting hip to a sound. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because even my my last two or three projects before this, it's still a, it's still a different sound. Yeah, you know? I definitely hear that. So what would you define your sound as? <clears throat> Or your you know, music in general. Yeah, I, I always call it like you know just on some slight shit like mad music. You know what I'm saying? Um, pink and rain, pink. You know what I'm saying? Just roll up records, like however um, you want to do it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Fire. But um, I think like if I had to really put like technical term on it, like it's wavy. You know, it definitely got a wave to it. You know, I'm definitely still got like a southern accent, and still a southern flow as far as lyricism, as far as content. Like you know. Trapping is a south thing, you know, right. so shit like that. So it's still southern content, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, I talk about, you know, the P shit, whoop de whoop. You know, that that was a different experience in my life that I was able to go through. So I kind of just take away from different things. Like, I lived in Houston, so that was some experience that I went through yeah. and shit like that. But um, I think, like, you know, to put everything in perspective, like, I like the Neo soul. Like, yeah. I like the Neo. Uh, you know, the Neo vibes, you know what I'm saying, from the early 2000s. I like 60s and 70s music, so I always just tell people it's like Neo wavy type shit. Fire. Yeah. I, I definitely agree to that. I tell everybody it's smooth shit, yeah. honestly. Like, yeah. And listen, we were just playing it in the studio for everybody, and everybody came up to me collectively and was like, yo, this is some smooth shit. You feel yeah. me? Like, and no That's pun love. intended. You feel me? Like, dead ass. Like, we all genuinely mean that. You feel That's me? Love. So, you know we like that shit so i under, <laughs> i understand why we are definitely your second your second most favorite to listen to city because we're not exposed to it often so then it's like okay you slow us down yeah you feel me it gives us time to like chill stay steady focus and you feel me yeah y'all wow. get home after a long day of the wrestling yeah you, know, you get home you take a little shower <laughs> you know roll y'all you know y'all roll with splits and all that shit out here <laughs> you, know, you know what i'm saying y'all do all this y'all go roll y'all shit up man y'all put that shit on but you know Every single time it's well received when we go in that direction. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I feel like while I was listening to it, I've been listening to it since Wednesday, honestly. Since I woke up to go to work, that was the first thing I let my ears listen love, to. Love, love. See the cover. I was like, all right, I'm with it. This is how we're going to start the day. Listen to it at work. I was like, all right, I can fuck with this. Feel me? Like, That's hard. It got me in a good bop. You feel me? It made me feel good. That's so good. Yeah. I was fucking with it. But it's That's like. Good. I, up here, we just, you know, we're fast. We're, we're too fast. So the fact that I was able to, you know, yeah. bounce around. My manager was tight. She was like, why are you smiling, laughing, geeked up at 6 o'clock in the morning? I'm like, bitch, I'm chilling. Like, yeah. Mind your neck. You, you feel me? me? That's so. what it is. You're supposed to be nonchalant <laughs> on energy, you know what I'm No, saying? exactly. I felt like I could have, while listening to it, I felt like, I was in LA. I felt like I was in an episode of Euphoria. Like, you know, just as things was just going around. And then I felt like I was skating somewhere. Like, and then of course you could roll up to that shit. There's a certain song up there where I, you know what lo fi beats are? Yeah, of course. There's like a beat that you have up there. And I feel like, yo, I could, I could study to this. Like, I could learn something new to this. You feel me? Like, it, it's so different. There's so many different sounds up here. And I just, you know, I have to give you salutations on that because a lot of things are just a one sound, 30 album, I mean, 30 minute, you know, piece. Right, right. And right. it's like, what did I just listen to? Right. You feel me? Like, I didn't really experience nothing out of it. So you provide an experience. You That's feel right. me? Um, I felt like um, I haven't watched too much of P Valley, but just of the things that I've seen on Twitter and just like the aesthetic it gives, like, you know how in um in TV shows there's strip clubs and it's like slow and it's like, you know just casual calm music like that's I can hear your music in that type of setting. Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. now bitches is just chilling. Now we talking to the customers. Now we just flirting. You feel me? Like 
just a casual walkthrough. I think that shit's fly. Yeah. I think that shit is fly because like one of my favorite sub genres that I came up with is like strip club music. Yeah. Yeah. Like wow. I be telling bitches like get your rent paid and everybody's throwing beans like. Listen, yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. You yeah. definitely uh fulfilled me when it came to the sound. For love, sure. You love. provided me with an experience. So thank you. You feel me? Salutations on that. Thank you so much. How long sure. did it take you to make the uh the project? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Man, like a week. Are you serious? Oh god. Wow. Yeah, my week, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You recorded that all in one week, or like, how how did that go? Please tell me about that experience. Yeah, it was really like I record myself. You feel me? Yeah. So, you know, like I wake up. That's fire. Every day at six a.m. Get two or two hours. Wow. And two hours on. You know what I'm saying? That. Like unless it, unless we are to the clock and it's like okay, we need to put a little extra time in or whatever. Right. But yeah, I think I had um finished it up Saturday. Wow. Before Wednesday drop and then turn it in on Monday. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now that's the fly shit. Hell yeah, man. That's the fly shit. So you don't go to the studio and sit in your crib? Yeah, yeah. I, I done did the studio thing and I just think that um, having a regimen where you can go, you know, to your mic, relax. Like sometimes I might not even record shit. I might just yeah. sit and listen to beats. I hear that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just so I can choose what I might want to get on or whatever. I might catch a vibe or whatever. Like I just might roll up and relax yeah you know what i'm saying and just listen to the beat so you know i think if you just put two hours in every day you can get a lot mm-hmm. done versus trying to do like an eight hour session or something like that like yeah, that should burn you out you yeah. know your engineer burned out anything. yeah like mm-hmm. everybody's burnt out you know or or everybody has had too much fun and haven't gotten shit done yeah they're overstimulated yeah so mm-hmm. so it's like two hours get your shit done okay we know we want to drop a project this day we know we need to be turned in by this day uh, we know that we can rap in a way where we can get it done by this day. Right. So let's make sure that it's, it, we hit in deadlines. So I definitely hear that. I think it worked out. Nah, that. respect to that. For real, for real. Because a lot of a lot of um, artists aren't willing to go that extra step where they now have to do the work for themselves. Right. You feel me? They don't want to teach themselves how to record. They don't want to teach them. They don't want to listen to their voice. You know, they don't know the, what is it called? The BPM and things of that nature. So it's like the fact that you've invested in yourself you know, financially, you know, environmentally, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's that's a really big progress. Right. No wonder your music sounds like quality. It sounds like luxury. You know well, me? Yeah. Like shit's definitely different. So salutations on that for sure. Um I definitely encourage a lot of artists to invest in equipment and invest in your sound because, you know, somebody only has one type of ear. An engineer or producer only has one type of ear and that's to their sound. You feel me? Your sound is your sound. You should be able to go in the studio and be like, yo, turn this up, change this, change that, da da da. Thanks. You feel me? That's only if you invest in yourself. You yeah. feel me? That's if you care and if you're passionate enough. So I definitely that that brings you up here. Hell you feel yeah. me? Respect. Hell yeah. Um, nah, but a week is crazy. Yeah, a week is crazy, man. But I always do that, unfortunately, and it's because of procrastination. Yeah. Like I'll give myself that time and I'll be like, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow on my two hour block. But I ain't gonna lie, it, it, it's, I'm getting better at it. Usually I'll be turning in a project, like if the project was out, it was supposed to be out at 12, it was getting turned at 10 o'clock at night. So oh, sorry. okay, like, yeah. So this project definitely allowed me to be able to get it in, in a time frame that I, you know, like I said, like I said, I mean, I've been trying to get more disciplined, man. Like yeah. that's been working for me, making sure that I'm putting out a project every quarter yeah you know what i'm saying or putting out something every quarter we stay invisible you know like i said coming up here for one thing still getting what you doing yeah. this making the necessary touches like you know that i'll go down into it so this is my first year really being able to take it that serious and i think this project right here um really showed you know the work that i've been putting in as far as trying to do the right thing right and i think next pro- you know the next project this year before it ends um, Before it ends, it's December 3rd. You pushing out another one? You're doing another one. Respect. Yeah, mm-hmm. I fuck with it. Nah, yeah, I'm man, fucking with it. So. That's gas, Hell for real. Yeah. Hell yeah, and that's it. You know, then we'll come at the top, you know, when in March. Listen. Next year, we're going to do it. Dropping on November 30th and then dropping another project sometime in December, like, that's crazy. Exactly. That's, like, exactly. that's exactly. it for me. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's it for me. Nah, I respect it. Hell I respect yeah. it, for sure. And even then, now you're giving yourself more time. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, we got so much shit to talk. Look at all, I, I like. Look at all the shit you got to talk about. Like, look at all the people I met. Like, look no, at what yeah. I mean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't say I'm being like that bars. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's all I'm like, <laughs> like, if niggas go and create motion, you got shit to talk about. No, I definitely agree to that for sure. And you've been talking about it because then one of your songs, you're like, we're going to we're going to New York in December. We bringing out the fur. 
December. <laughs> <laughs> It's not in New York in December. You no, know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, exactly. You know what I mean? That's I fuck with it. I fuck with it. And you know, on the next project when it come out in December, yeah, it's gonna have something about me up here with smooth <laughs> in New York. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works. That's okay. how it works. Okay. So, oh, that's some gas. That's some gas. I'm super excited for that. Let's say you already know the contact yeah. for all the press and everything else. Cause we live in. We oh, doing man. it. We Hell doing yeah. it for sure. You be nah, working. That's fucking fire. I definitely again salutations on everything because it's blessings. You feel me? Not everybody has that talent, so. I gotta give that to you. Hell yeah. So let's talk about fashion. I wanna talk about fashion. Get into it. Alright. When what do you have on? Let's talk about your drip right now. Yeah, we got a little orange cardi, man. Orange cardi, um, varsity jacket. You feel me? That's really it. Nothing too crazy. Oh, we got the orange cardi, you know what I'm saying? Just a strict white tee. Nothing too crazy. Ain't no stain on the white tee. Uh-huh. Uh, we got on the Travis's, man. Uh-huh. You know, just a little, little jeans. Oh, well, you know, nothing too crazy. Okay, it's a complex. It's a calm. And y'all boy got cold out here, man. It's, it's cool, you know. Yeah, we keep it real sure. cool, real collective. Cool, calm, and collective, okay? Hell yeah. All with a K, never with a C, so. Come on now. Come so on. You know so. <laughs> Listen, I'm always the coldest with a K, so I got know how that shit go, for sure. Come on now. <laughs> Respectfully, I just gotta let that be known. But, no, yeah, so I want to talk about your fashion sense. Yes. Because, you know, I see you on Twitter. I see you on Instagram. You put that shit on. Yeah. So how would you define your style? I ain't gonna lie, man. I get a lot of inspiration from what y'all got up going on up here, man. Okay. You know, off top. Um, I think that damn, um, I'm big, uh, a big fan of Carl Kanai. Okay. Um, I think that he is like, to me, you know, a lot of niggas fuck with Daffy Dan. I fuck with Daffy Dan, but yeah. I think Carl Kanai deserves a couple of more flowers. That's my personal opinion. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because I think that what he did with streetwear. Um, was so revolutionary as far as being the first nigga to like really go out there with the you know what I'm saying the pushers and then uh, really get they take on shit and, and really design shit with them in mind like real yeah. street wear you yeah. know what I'm saying not like we stepping out in fashion wear right. but like when we really doing our shit on the corner we got something to we put got on. Shit on you know so I think that like a lot of his designs and shit just like that vintage 90s aesthetic man you know that's a lot of what I, I definitely pull from so even when I'm designing that orange party shit I'm always trying to um you know give it that that 90s New York yeah shit you know the varsity jackets fly I appreciate the patches that. on it the color scheme is fly thank you so let's so let's talk about your brand because if yeah. you feel me that's most important we could give everybody day flowers yeah. but we gotta give you your shit. You okay. I mean, that's your shit. You just Look. put your shit on. So, okay. even if you want to break down the the details of your of your varsity jacket, yeah, man. I mean, shit. It's really just you know what I'm saying orangeparty.com, but it's really just um different logos. It's called Wada Logo. You know, it got some sweatpants that go to it too. But we just put basically all the different Orange Party logos on on the uh, jacket. And uh, Orange Party really just came from um, you know. My favorite, one of my favorite colors is orange. Okay. And um, niggas, like, Cartier, I guess, was too much for niggas to say, so they started just putting Cardi by yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then that's when I was like, shit, like, tw- like top of 2019, I was like, orange Cardi. I had just wrote it in my notes and, mm. you and know, sat on it. it. Yeah, and then, like, then I started putting out shades under it and then um, moved to, like, duffel bags and shit like that. Oh. And then from there from there you know so would you describe it as a clothing brand or a lifestyle brand um i'm gonna definitely describe it as a a clothing brand okay you feel me like i think that um a lot of it is is really me being able to like wear the shit that i don't ever really see out or some shit that i maybe have thrifted and think i could do better yeah for sure yeah so it's definitely a clothing brand um off top you know i think the the lifestyle part would come from what i give it right you know as an artist but I think you know off rip is a clothing brand for sure. Okay, how does how does your your landscape react to your clothing? I think it just go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Like the music, the clothes are you know the clothes are expressive, but it's not loud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that the jacket got a lot going on, but it's still it's eye catching, but it's not loud. No, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and I it's think that's what obnoxious. my music. You know what I mean? So I think my music conveys that. I think who I am as a person conveys that. So. It, it translates, you know, but then I also have a lot of people who know nothing about my music. Mm. Fuck, oh, with, just fuck the clothes. with your clothes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how it should go. Yeah, you feel me? I I definitely think um, being multifaceted and you know having multiple faces or hats, I should be saying is 
is that's how the game should work. Right. You feel me? Because sometimes we should only be having conversations about just this. You feel me? We only having conversations about a podcast. We've only having conversations about your varsity jacket. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I do music. You feel me? Or you listening to your music and you're like, what's that? And you're like, oh, that's me. And they're mind blown. You feel me? So yeah. it's like, it just adds to the flavor. There's there's certain lanes, there's certain times, and there's certain places for those types of conversations. So yeah. I definitely fuck with that for sure. What is what is something that you have on the, uh, the vision board for Orange Cardi? Um, so moving to 2023, uh, we kind of really always like do as far as quality assurance, like we'll put out something maybe one year and then sit on it okay. and it won't drop into the next year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just so we can, um, we can really see how it withstand through a lot of things that we take it through. But top of 2023, we're going to have, um, the wider logo sweatpants going to probably drop for sure. We definitely going to keep with some graphic tees and stuff like that. Um, in the fall time, we got these like leather jackets that's gonna pop mm. out. We're gonna do satin, uh, satin bomber jackets probably in the springtime. You're not playing. No, nah, no. Nah. I respect it. Orange Party about to jump back out. We kind of was real quiet this year, so 2023 definitely got a lot going on. For, for sure. sure. I can't wait to see that and support yeah. you. So you got, I'm gonna get you some. Nah, definitely. I can't, can't wait to put my shit on. Yeah, you know, y'all got longer winters, so we're gonna definitely get you a jacket. Nah, you need yeah. That. You need that up here. <laughs> Child, I don't play about the jacket. cold. Yeah. I definitely don't play about the cold. My bubble got literally goose uh, feathers in it. Like, yeah. I don't <laughs> play about it, baby. It's like, it's yeah. no. <laughs> Listen, so I'm super excited for that. I can't wait to be the first one up here with it. So I'm gassed up for that. Um, So how do you feel that fashion intricates or like intertwines with the music industry? How do you feel about the importance of it? Mm, I think it's important from a from a business standpoint, you know, but the two can coincide um but i think i'm gonna just leave it at that you know respectfully if, if, if it's from a business aspect like how we was talking about like how artists should have certain things to right. push they shit, right and yeah but you know um i ain't gonna necessarily sit here and agree with i think if an artist is is putting out their own shit, that's great yeah and it's a big you know fashion house conglomerate that's great but tying artists to certain luxury houses and shit like that. I don't think that's needed. Yeah. 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 I think that's skewed and I think that it could be performative on the fashion house end. I hear that. And that's why. You know. No, I definitely agree to that. Yeah. For sure. We've seen a lot of that. Yeah. For I mean, sure. It's been, and it's crumbling right before our eyes. A lot of it doesn't now, make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we're seeing the repercussions on, on when they don't fuck with you. On or, some or, shit. Yeah, you know, or just, you know, I think what Rihanna's doing is, is cool. If you want to go that route, if you want to just brand yourself and use your own likeness, but allowing people to use your likeness for you, I would tell an mm. athlete that, you know, allowing people to profit off your likeness or associate with something with you because you got this going on and, and they know it's going to reach the demographic that you have. You know, don't fuck with that. I hear that. Yeah. You moving around a lot, you know, you South Carolina, yeah. Atlanta, yeah. Houston, yeah. the West Coast. Yeah all different completely different areas regarding fashion thanks where's your favorite place to honestly just go like people watch when it comes to that shit when it comes to the fashion who put it on mm. um i have i have my favorites in each region okay i have i like the streetwear okay here um, I like formal wear in um in the south. Okay. I like formal wear in the south. Um, and I like West Coast fashion because I think it's so cultured. Yeah, it's I so agree. to just them. I agree to that. But but New York street wear, you know, sometimes it looks crazy, but 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 a lot of times, it is you know it works. Y'all put that, y'all put that shit on. So I like New York street wear fashion for sure. Um, I'm not gonna say I enjoy every aspect of it, but everything has its own audience. And you can't never knock that. Yeah. Sure. I went to L.A. Um, for the first time in April. And mm-hmm. I went for eight days. I wanted to go visit my brother. Right. And I was just chilling. And I had gotten off the plane at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And he was like, let's go put the stuff down, whatever the case may be, and we go on a ride. Yeah. So, all right, whatever, boom. So he brings me up to the mountains. I spent my whole eight days in the mountains. I didn't even know there was mountains in California. Like, that was like. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, because yeah. they don't show that on TV. They don't show it in the textbook. They don't talk about it in class. So right. when you think California, you just think weed and just the little downtown LA. Like that's all you think it is. You feel yeah. me? Like okay. That to me, that's my perspective on right. it. You feel me? So he had brought me up to this mountain, and you going you're going up these hills for hours, like, and it's steep. My ears are popping. Whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. boom. So we finally get up to this to this little like standpoint, whatever, and it's a little bit off of this this neighborhood. And I'm like, damn, they live on these hills, whatever, boom. So we finally get to this rock. We go behind the rock. The Hollywood signs legit, like it's crazy, cause like it's right here. Then you see downtown LA, you see whatever, boom. But there's some people there drinking forties with long ass dicky shorts on long ass <laughs> socks on and then they got these little, i don't know if they were bands or if they was chucks but i was like oh my god y'all really dress like that here yeah like the tv the tv will show you what they put on like that's for real like that's that's like real life yeah and i was in such culture shock because i'm just like we all dress the same over here right you know connecticut i'm from connecticut so we dress like New Yorkers. Right. You know what I mean? We all look alike. We all dress alike. We all talk alike. So it's like, why we don't have no culture of fashion or a certain type of look. But you go to <laughs> L.A., Yeah. they still wear 5X t-shirts. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh my God. Those extra long dickies with the higher the socks, you know, the more nigga bang. Yo, yeah. Yes. You know, they still got the... The Chuck, Chucks and Vans will forever. No, yeah, exactly. They will never die. They're timeless. As long as the LA For sure. Alive. For, For sure. sure. <laughs> With a whole 40 in his hand. And he had he had tears. And I was like, oh my God. Like, even down to the tattoo placements, like everything. Yeah. I was like, it's holy culture. shit. Yeah, yeah, it's culture. And nobody, I feel like nobody would be able to understand that until you go over there to experience that. You feel me? Like, yes. some people, like, you know. I don't want to say imitated because I feel like if they try to talk like that over here or try to act like that over here, it's a mockery. You know, yeah. they're making a joke of it. You feel me? But right. like, y'all have to go over there to experience that shit and get a feel of like, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Like, fashion so expressive and fashion is so like, it's just it's very important. Hell it's yeah. very important for a stepper. It's just very important to peep. You know, different areas of fashion and how it affects things hell yeah period point blank because i me personally i'm looking at your sneakers before i'm looking at your face yeah that's just me right that's just and me. that's a lot of people yeah like but, but them niggas down there know what that nigga got on no exactly i know what you i know what your shoes it's man like. versus see, man over there exactly I it's a respect thing where you from uh, right <laughs> Right. You get right. what I'm saying? Okay. So that's how it was like, where you come, come from? Different. That's literally the first question out there in my mouth is, where you come from? Right. Why are you here? Right. Who you know here? Right. You got a blue sweater on? Right. What's up? What's you feel up? me? Right. Where you from? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. What up? neighborhood you come from? So, shit's definitely, shit's definitely fire when, when you peep, when you have an eye for those things. I guess I should be saying, you know, more of the story. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So, I want to go back a little bit. I have some context. So, you played ball. Right. Let's talk about that. Okay. Because one, that's why you went to a D1 college. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You mm-hmm. feel me? That How was that experience for you? Um, It was straight, you know. I, I usually don't never say, like, with school, but... Um, nah, you don't got to do that. Yeah, but it was straight, you yeah. know. And I think that's... <clears throat> it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about how disciplined I was and was not. Mm-hmm. Uh, what it take to be at a certain level would it take to uh, have 18,000 eyes looking at right. you like every night so I think that um, I learned a lot from that aspect I just didn't really agree with how certain things was ran you know and I think that instead of trying to change the system I just changed my status mm. okay and that was it you know okay. but it taught me a lot and I mean like you said like it really added to the story like it yeah. got a lot of character to it cause you know that's what I had going on and it was at, at like a high level like mm friends in the WNBA you yeah. know shit like that yeah. so it's cool but I think that um my path is just different That's yeah sure. do you feel like it you know being in front of all of those eyes and being having to be performative on you know an athletic level do you feel like transitioning it over to music do you feel like it built you for that or prepared you for that hell yeah yeah hell yeah and I think that's why I said it is necessary to the story because um it just that's, I feel like that's really how it was supposed to happen. Yeah. Because it was like, if you go back home and talk to niggas, niggas was just like, nah, like, I'm still mad she's not in the WNBA. But yeah. it was like, you know, this shit that I got going on right here, like, that was what the foundation needed to be. It needed to be a part of the story. The shit I did when I dropped out of school from 
being rebellious and from having all that going on, that story, you know, all the makeup, the shit that I got going on now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. I think that's fire. Yeah, I never got. Crazy. I never attended college, so I never. Know, I've never known what that you know experience is like. You feel me? Yeah, it's crazy. I sometimes I think like if I went to college, who would I be? Like where would I be at? You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm very grateful to be here. I feel like sometimes it's a personality thing. Some people need to experience that that college experience to build themselves or to find themselves, yes. you know? Yes. So I'm glad, you know, you got to experience that, especially on an athletic level, because a lot of you live in somebody's dream, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? yeah. So that shit's fire, for sure. I'm sure you made a lot of friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. It teaches you how to, like, be independent yeah. and literally stand on your own, you feel me? So um, I definitely got to give salutations to that, because some people get lost. I think you can get lost in college, though. Yeah. You know, I think that college... um you feel independent. I think people who never been to college, they have the sentiment that it's a certain like independency that you gain. But I think you gain a certain dependency mm. because like you kind of get into this little ecosystem. Okay. And it's almost kind of like high school again, where you was like a small uh, okay. fish in a big pond, and yeah. you become the big you fish in a small. You know what I'm saying? So then I think like that's when you start seeing the people always going back to college or always holding on to college. Like you know, I hear people that. People always holding on to high school. I hear that. So I think that uh, college can be what you make it, but it really show you, like, who are you? Yeah. Without attaching a lot of stuff. And this coming from somebody who, like, like I said, like, I've always been a part of a team. Like, this might be my first time not being a part of a team doing okay. something. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Because, like, I joined a sorority. I fucking play ball. You know, I'm always mixed and mingled yeah. in with somebody, and you're taking on the morals or the personality or the culture of all that shit that you yeah. got going on. Even you down have to, to a van. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, to survive. Yeah. You know, you can't be out there and then be the outlier because everybody's going to be like, well, nigga, why you fucking dumb? Yeah, why are you doing everything <laughs> down I, that we not doing? Yeah, You know what exactly. I'm saying? So I think it make it can make you dependent. I hear that. I, I, sure. I think that. people who haven't been to college and find their way and make their personality, them people is fire. Yeah. Because you didn't have much of an influence, but you had the whole world as an influence. Yeah. And you could have pulled from all kinds of shit. Yeah. But you chose to bury out this little thing you got right here. I think people who got to college, they could probably latch on to something they might have seen. You know, For whatever. sure, yeah. So I commend the niggas who ain't got to college. Nah. You know? I agree. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we here. Thanks. Yeah. And y'all making way, you know? No, yeah. That's that's the one thing that I can definitely say. It's a sur- it's it becomes a survival thing. You Hell yeah. You have to. Hell yeah. You have to have some sort of independency, you feel me? So I definitely I definitely agree to that. Um, so let's talk about the start of your journey, yeah. your your rap career. Mm-hmm. When did that start? How did that start? When I dropped out of school. Why? Yeah, I moved to Houston. Um I was working as a software engineer. I, I went to school for computer science. Mm. I was working as a software engineer out there. I had met this DJ from Louisiana, like two months moving out there. He was like, we we chopping up, kiki and shit at the bar, whoop de whoop. He was like, man, I fuck with you. You must be a rapper. I said, mm. I'm looking at this nigga like, right. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? Like, this <laughs> right. is, I'm just now dropping out the basketball shit. So I'm like, hell no, nigga. I'm like, I do. The, the computer shit right. I'm like you know I'm getting good money from that shit I'm like you right. tripping I ain't about to give up my job fucking with you on no rap shit right. you know what I'm saying right. so I'm telling him like that he was looking at me like bitch you crazy you need to rap <laughs> <laughs> he, he, yeah, he told me straight up he was like you like he was like yeah. fuck what you talking about fuck that computer shit you need to rap so I'm like you know we basically chewing each other off like fuck what you talking no, about yeah. but we <laughs> ended up still like conversing and shit he was like real cool on me you know what I'm saying and then yeah. He seen it in you before you seen it in yourself. Oh God, like, and it was just off the strength of like conversation. Right. And then, um, when I got to Houston or whatever, you know, I had a little bit of shit going on. But then, like, the job that I went out there for, like, they ended up laying us off and shit. Mm. So, like, the next day, I go to the club, and I'm in there just like, damn, I don't know what the fuck I'm about to do now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because now my whole life has just been basketball and. You know, whoop, yeah. whoop, shit like that. So now I'm at like a standstill. Like now I'm jumping out, but I'm jumping out not at 18. I'm jumping out not at 23 or something right. like that. 20, like 21. And I'm just like, fuck. I'm fucked. And then that's when I started down. I met this girl. Mm. You feel me? Met this bitch. And she started doing whatever she started doing. And one thing led to another. And then out of nowhere, I was just a madam. I hear that. You okay. know what I'm saying? So then that's when that shit had started going on. And I had went to this. I had a plug out there while I was fucking with. And I went out there to him, whatever. And he had owned the studio. Mm. And, you know, doing his thing. So I went into the studio and shit. 
Because he told me, he was like, um, pull up on me at the studio to call. So I'm like, damn, you know, that's crazy. So when it was time for me, when I when I lost the job, I was like, thinking about it. I was like, fuck it, I might as well try to rap me and shit. Yeah. But then when I, when the whole Madam shit was going on, it was just, you know, a lot going on now. Like, now my life was, like, going faster than what I could Yeah, be going, exactly. You feel me? But um, I ended up meeting this dude, whatever, and just started rapping. Just started rapping out there in Houston. And that's why I came back to the A. And that was really it's good. Up since. I yeah. definitely hear that. For sure. That's fire. Man, Off a crazy. conversation in a bar. Bro, like, she, it was, both niggas, like, that her and him, it was crazy. And I don't, I want to say it was probably, like, the same bar. Mm. I want to say that. Okay. I don't want to quote myself. But I want to say it was That like, would be some full circle shit. That would be crazy. But she really was, I mean, powerful horse in the stable, man. Two or three more horses in the state, but I mean, it was going. Yeah. It was going. It was a race. So. That mean it was time. Honestly. Yeah, man. It's like, test it out. Fuck it. Why not? You feel me? Yeah. Then I, I got hip on some shit. Like, Houston was good. Houston was cool. You know, Houston is a big story in, like, how I really started getting into music and right. shit, knowing, like, what I need to be doing, what sound I, I wanted to be going for, you know, really getting put onto some games. So it's really starting in Houston for real. Okay, shout out to Houston for sure. I've never been to Houston. Man, you'll love it. Oh, That's why everybody God. tells me. I think you should. You need to get out there yourself. No, I need to just get out of New York. Yeah. Because I love New York, so I don't really leave New York. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. I need to go fly. You, you got to go to Houston. I, I think. Try some things. Man, what people out there like. What they will fly you out just to host that shit? Cause oh, they have so much shit going on, bro. Like mm. they have so much shit going on. They really got a good, a good thing. I gotta going. go fly out. You for do. Sure. You gotta touch out there and go experience that shit for yeah. sure. And the food is slapping. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the top three spots you will go eat at in Houston. I like Nikki's. Another hard one. Yeah, I like Nikki's. I like Torchies. You know, that's like a little chain out there. Uh, I can't remember the other one, but it's like a barbecue spot. Okay. Um, but Austin got some really good barbecue too. Austin, Texas. Okay. How far is that distance? Probably like an hour thirty. Oh, that's not bad. No, no, it's not crazy because um, my homegirl used to go to University of Texas and shit, so I went out there one time. And they had some good at barbecue. I ain't gonna care. I hear that, so now that's where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. Listen, go for when I go, y'all know who put me on. Yeah. Wear a discount the next time you see it. <clears throat> Facts. Because I'm gonna make that shit go up. That Maybe. shit hit. I ain't gonna. I ain't I gonna lead you wrong. <laughs> I hear that. I appreciate you. Facts. I appreciate you because I can't put you on the nowhere here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Facts. Oh I eat pizza out here. So I eat pizza. Oh, I fuck with pizza out here. What the? What's up with that? Oh, child, I can't answer that. I'm not from here. That's not. Honestly, I only eat what's pizza up with here. That? Oh, I'm from here and I don't even. You don't even fuck with the pizza? I do fuck with the pizza. We got good pizza, but I don't eat pizza all the time. I got yeah. my spots. Yeah. All right, all right. See, I'll put you on to the spot. Honestly, okay, okay. I come here and I get fed. Like, I get home fed. Oh, I'm very grateful to, you know, have been taken in the get home fed. So, unfortunately, I can't really put you on to no, like, areas. Sorry. I could put you on to Ricardo's up in Harlem, but, like, up, other than that, truly, Ricardo's goes crazy. Okay. You like seafood? Um, yeah, yeah. We like a boil bag or something. Okay. Like that. You know, we like, we like that country shit. You like lobster ravioli? Uh, so then I can't put you on to that. Yeah. That shit. Italian. We done got all Italian out with it. No, no. We like nigga all niggas. I like nigga food. Nigga yeah. food. You feel me? Nah. When yeah. you come down to the A, we're going to get you right. We're going to have yeah. you home fed. <laughs> so we got me home fed. So we're going to get you right home fed. We're going to yeah. get you right in the restaurant. Yeah. Shit. I'm grateful for that. You got to come to the A so we can do it. I'm going to come see you. I'm going to come see you. In May, quote this right now, right here, right now. I'm going to come see you in May. Okay. That's just what it's gonna be. That's I got thing. you. I'm gonna come see you, oh, we're gonna and we gonna get right. Yeah, we're gonna okay, live. you gotta bring me to the studio. Yeah, I have to. Oh well, you say you recorded your crib. Well, but. well, we got a studio to go to. You know, and I feel like okay. that's when the studio is. You you bring yeah. your blogs in. Mm-hmm. You bring your peoples in. You get what I'm saying. Y'all get something going. Y'all just create that vibe that one or two times. But as far as when you're like really pushing it out, right? You need that home space. Nah, I agree to that for sure. I'm excited yeah. for sure for sure. Yeah. All right, so tell me about Atlanta. How's Atlanta treating you? Beautiful. From from South Carolina to Houston to yeah. Atlanta. Right. Tell me about Atlanta. For sure. I damn like every summer, like probably since like six, seven. Okay. I would go to Atlanta on the east side, uh, be hooping outside and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of always been out there or whatever. But like I always tell people, you you from where you went to high school. So right. That's Columbia. You know okay. what I'm saying? But I always like my peoples and shit was over there. So. 
we always like grew up kind of pretty much over there, like fuck with the niggas over there. Like everybody was just always over there. So yeah. Atlanta, man, you know what I'm saying? You know Atlanta's what it is. Like you know you can't leave shit in your car, it's gonna get broken into. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just little shit, but it's it's a good. I tell people all the time, man. Like it's no place like. Me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I've been to a lot of places, and okay. I've been in the several major cities and lived in them sometimes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I think there's no place like A because it's just like. The experiences, the people, the food, the dumb shit, the fun yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? The bitches, the niggas, like yeah. the cameras, the everything. Cameras, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a good time it's when it's a good time. Yeah, and you close enough. Being from South Carolina, you close enough to your peoples where they can get to you. You know what I'm saying? Or you can get back to them, or whatever, whatever. You know, my peoples is close to me, so I make sure that I'm still in a proximity where I can get to them in a timely right. fashion, whether it's by plane or by driving. Right. You know. So okay. The A is. A is the A, and you always gonna have a good time when you come out that way. I hear that. For I'm sure. excited. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. come by and we gonna do that for sure. You are gonna enjoy it. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm okay. very excited for that. I'm sorry. Who would you say, music wise or fashion wise, down in LA is making noise? Um, uh, not in LA, in Atlanta is making noise right now. Music wise, me. Shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 this is why I ain't gonna lie. I don't really listen to niggas like that for real, for real. Cause, yeah. Because if you think about it, I don't really, my, the most of our artists I listen to are West Coast artists. Yeah. So I don't really listen to um, Atlanta artists. You know, I, of course, you always fuck with the, the pioneers, you know what I'm saying? We grew up on the Jesus and the T.I.s and the mm-hmm. Gucci's or whatever, especially being in the six. Gucci was, you know what I'm saying? We, we like pumping gas and nudie would pull I, up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's shit like that that you see. You always gonna fuck with them type of niggas, but. Uh, as far as like what I'm putting my ear on, it's really more West Coast shit. But um, Atlanta, me nigga, I'm I'm I gonna to come out of that bitch and for fashion wise, me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so talk to me about the fact that you don't put, you don't really do features on your projects. But tell me about that. Why is that? Cause I think that, to be honest with you, like because my sound is so it's so different, so selective. I gotta continue to cultivate my audience, which is. You know my sound. I do have one person who I do want to get a feature with, or whatever. You know, what I'm saying Kazi, he out there out of San Diego, though. Okay. You know, what I'm saying so, good peoples. But as far as just like what I want to keep showing niggas is that like, yeah, I do this shit. Nigga. Right. Like, I don't need no crutch, no handheld, right. no nothing. Like, I really, really do this rap shit. Um, and I just damn, you know, want to keep just showing niggas like. We can hold on on this shit. Yeah. You know, when, when it's time for features, we'll do it. Right. You know, we're not opposed to it. You know what I'm saying? We ain't stingy with it. But as you build it, I think that your first couple of um projects, it need to be standing on your own. You got to be sturdy on your shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It got to be where niggas be like, oh, yeah, she be getting off. You know, for like sure. she, can, she can hold her own. You know how niggas was just like, yeah, I'm fucking with this. Right. That's good versus like, I got a seven track project and, and three so the tracks got features. Right. And you're just on the hook. Or I'm just of one verse. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of lazy to me. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's like, is this what you do or not? I definitely hear that. For sure. You're not talented enough, period. That's mm-hmm. just what that comes down to. Yeah. I definitely agree to that. Especially when you break down the numbers, like you said, a seven song feature and then people got three, four features on it. It's like, so what's really going on? What's really, or you just relying on, again, we're going back to now, you, you relying on associate yourself with right something. and i don't i don't need the association to be okay cardi got down got her shit going on like yeah. i'm fucking with what she got going on and then if somebody else was to come on the shit it's like okay i'm fucking with them two together yeah. you know like this was different you know what i'm saying but as far as like my audience i want my audience to be it's really cultivated like i damn near am picking a fan by one by one by one that's doing shit like this i hear that you know what i'm saying my man's right there like that's one extra you know not necessarily fan but somebody else who wanted to tap in like, no exactly you never know what that could bring you i don't baby nobody listen to my shit and, and i ain't gonna do it by using no feature right you feel me? so like, if somebody want to listen to it, it was because we put in the necessary work we made the connections we played it now somebody this is that's how you convert yeah organically I definitely hear that for sure. sure. Heavy on it organically because a lot of things are forced nowadays and I feel like people are just too busy like shoving shit in your face or down your throat where it's like, oh, you have to consume my shit or 
you know, it has to be taken in a certain type of aspect, and it's just like, feel me? Just right. play the shit. Just play see, it. See what everybody gonna say, how they vibe, if they vibe, you feel me? Like, if they say something, you feel me? Like, Hell yeah. I'm heavy on I'm heavy on the organic shit. Hell yeah. Because a lot of shit is fabricated these days, especially in the mainstream industry. A lot of things are fabricated, so. And it's a lot of yes men. I mean, if, if, one, if somebody in here could have been like, man, turn this shit off. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it's you. You feel even more grateful, right? But going in, I think a lot of artists want everybody, like everybody, to like their music. But it's like, bro, you missing the point. Like you gotta gain one fan by one fan by one fan right. till you get to a thousand. Right. Then that thousand gonna get you everybody else. Yeah, I agree okay. to that. You feel me? Oh, it always just takes one person. One person. You you just never know. You just never know. Never. And that's just you coming outside. Feel me? That's. That's my biggest thing. My biggest tip is coming outside. Come join us. Come see who you can meet. Come run your old shoulders. And you feel me? Hell yeah. Next thing you know, you got a million dollars in your pocket. So right. Right. You feel me? It's very important. I definitely fuck with it. Um, last thing. One of the last things I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. Qu- a quick seven songs. Why seven? Um, quick tight. You know what I'm saying? I think that like, let's say you, you know, walk into the transit or... You know what I'm saying? You you know, going somewhere real quick. Throw that shit on. That's 20 minutes. I yeah, that. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you just put that quick 20 minute on. Like, for us, like, in the South, like, that's a that's a gas station and grocery, sh- grocery store run for us. Yeah. You know, or damn, we might be going to my homeboy house on the west side from the east side. That shit, a 20 minute ride. Right. That's from start that bitch at number one and that bitch in at number seven. We just now pulled into the yard. Yeah. Like, that's what got it's a cruise. That was, that's all it is. Y'all done smoked a little clip. <laughs> you done yeah. key key. You done laughed about them. You know, my homegirl voice on the beginning of the song. Like, you right. know, whatever. You no, know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's just like, shit, it got us from point A to point B. Yeah, that's for what, sure. That's what music for me is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's That's hard to mean. grasp music nowadays because everybody has such a short attention span. Yes. It's unfortunate because I'm one of those people who have a very short attention span. Right. Shout out to Twitter because Twitter killed my attention span. Because <laughs> I, I want everything fast and in my face. Like, I need it. Like, if it, if it takes too long to get me to really do something... That's a dub for me. You know what I mean? Now everybody's on TikTok where things come at you a millisecond, a millisecond. You feel me? So it's yeah. like... It's, it's now a scientific fact. If you can't grab somebody's attention in seven seconds, it's a dub. You feel me? So yeah. it's like, um, I, you know, we were sitting down earlier and I had mentioned, like, on your in- intro, there's trumpets. That's, like, one of the first things I hear. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm in for it. You yeah. feel me? Like, I knew I was going to be in for an experience. So, and I love the fact that, you know, you mentioned the, the quick take thing because we need more of that. You feel me? Like, everybody wants to do a, l- a deluxe. Chris Brown drops a regular album and it has 28 singles on it. And that's just a regular. And then in the next week, he's going to drop a deluxe with 28 more singles on it. And it's like, how am I supposed to consume all of this music and be like, oh, these are my top three favorites. This is this. You feel me? Like, even pick down a beat or mention which beats I like, et cetera, et cetera. So I like the fact that you understand that concept. Hell yeah. That's because, like you said before, though, the streaming shit fucked niggas up. Some niggas had to put out more just to make the numbers make sense. Yeah. But that's why we keep getting the microwave popcorn shit because... Niggas ain't brave enough to put out that seven. Right. And then it's like, okay. Solid seven. You know, and it's like, okay, the numbers wasn't what we, it ain't going to maybe be like 40 million. It yeah. might be 20 million because you done put your projects down number wise, but we replayed that motherfucker. Look how many times you got the replay on that. Yeah, exactly. And I, I want to keep going on to like the replay value. Like, niggas can have a big first week numbers and this, that, and the third. Right. If niggas is spinning a seven-track project and my first week numbers is, you know, 4,000 spins that first week, that's pumping. Yeah, no, You get what I'm saying? That's yeah. pumping because it's seven. Yeah. Shit, niggas was running the fuck out that seven versus I had 20. It's like, we don't really know how many niggas was really bumping all sure. 20 or, you know what I'm saying? Well, they could have went through it one time. 20 times 100, that's 2,000. So if 100 people only really went through it one time, we really still not getting good numbers. Yeah. Or went through it twice. Yeah. We didn't get good numbers from that because the replay value was No, exactly. Low. It's trash. Yeah. I definitely agree to that. I feel like when I when I be at work, or especially like when I'm listening to it, I listen to it on the train twice. Um, and I listen to it, I got here at like 11, and I probably listened to it while walking through a couple stores. And every time it ends, I'm like, damn, like that was quick. You like, feel me? I, now I gotta replay it again. You feel me? <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, okay, exactly. I can fuck with it. But it makes you appreciate the music more. Yeah. Because you know it's gonna come quick. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like now you're really listening. You feel me? Like it, it, 
it adds to the experience. You feel me? And it makes you more excited for the next one. Because you, know right. you know the next one's going to be another you know, quick take. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, I can just pop in me. Almost like cassette tapes. I can just pop that bitch yeah. in. You know what I'm saying? Pop it in, pop it on. Okay, I might want to... Today, I'm feeling highly flammable, but tomorrow, I'm feeling like pinky ring pimping. You know what I'm saying? And it was still in a nice time frame. It was still just mm-hmm. quick, easy to the point. Is that how you would like to consume music? Yeah, I like... I only listen to projects. Okay. Especially if I'm doing shit, I listen to whole projects. Yeah. I don't have playlists. Okay. Yeah, like, I'm I'm a project person, so I do my music in projects. If I, if I put out a project, I'm expecting niggas to listen to it as the project, yeah. you know, as the collective art. Um, I, I'm not a fan too much particularly of niggas snatching what they like and putting it into their playlist but I'm with the game yeah you know but I think I like to go back old school I Trump niggas get the tape they running the whole tape you know cause I like this artist mm-hmm. and, and I think with the playlist and shit you now we get in so many different artists it You're takes away from the artist it. even being able to go on tour cause yeah. niggas don't know the album cause they only know one song so now I got to point that one song to in the ground. Yeah. Or I got to now put the pressure on myself to make two or three or four big hits. And we know that's not really a reality. Yeah. Versus the old school, them boy was performing album cuts. Because it was some great album cuts. Yeah. But, but it was performing album cuts. And it was performing the, the hits was at the end. We no, performing exactly. the album cuts. Exactly. Right now. Mm-hmm. As, as far as, you know, doing a show. I definitely agree to that. Yeah. Because so, then you go on tour and then it's like everybody can literally sing word for word of your shit. Like, yeah. And it's all 20 minutes of that shit you feel me so i definitely understand i definitely understand that it's it's just crazy how much time has changed or how much like music has changed throughout time you oh feel my God. me like and how we consume it it's so no i now. agree to that <clears throat> i definitely agree to that it's scary to see how th- how fast things like move in a day i'm not even talking in a week in a month in a year like there's a hundred thousand songs that get dropped daily on yeah. spotify right that's that's a fact like they've they've given that analytic out already so it's like what you know what i mean like and it puts so much pressure on everybody because it's like oh is this timeless music is this classic music like how you know what i mean how am i supposed to make it in this in this big ass ocean of music like and it's all different music but you feel me like the reality is that you're not gonna make it no don't say that i'm saying that the reality is that you're not gonna make it on a on a platform where it's like everybody can be a mega star yeah but you can have your own audience if you can fill in a room think about it if i drop and i had a thousand people buy my project when i drop and the project is ten dollars right 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 right. i mean i'm good at math but yeah you do it it. i ain't gonna say you know yeah what's wrong with that yeah. And if I did that three times a year, what's wrong with that? I yeah. may not be a mega star. I may not have I may not even have done a world tour or a across, you know, Europe tour year right, or right, whatever. Right. I may not be that. Right. But what's wrong with just a thousand fans? You get what I'm saying? And yes. that's what I mean. Like niggas gotta start like artists have to start putting it into that perspective. Yeah. And I think we would get much better music once it's that case. But if we keep trying to go for the big slam and the big home run instead of like first base, second base. We gonna keep you gotta continuing to get the bullshit. Yeah, everybody but. trying to compete with Drake. You that's, can't be him. That's the problem. It won't happen. It's only gonna be one Drake. No, literally. History, that's historically, it. it's only gonna be one Drake. Yeah. And even if you come and try to be the second one, it's still not gonna work because we already like the first one. You're not Drake. We don't, yeah. Not Drake. <laughs> we like the first one already. Please don't bring us. <laughs> we don't want imitation. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's what I mean. Like, that. you're not gonna make it in the sense where everybody's not gonna be a megastar. But if I'm if I'm good enough yeah. that I can make a great living or I can make six figures in some way, shape, or form off my music and my merch and people are inspired by what I say, what's wrong with that? Yeah. I mean, that's that's how you make it out. That's that's your way of living. For me, like you said earlier, you went on a highway, you don't want to own lane. What's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, people got to compare to have, getting a thousand compliments in one day. Like, you would be so overstimulated by that. Like, yeah. you don't even think you know a thousand people. You feel me? So for that to take place, it's like you have to... You have to value and feed that community of just a thousand people. You Literally. feel me? That that eight billion that you're trying to trying to force feed is not is not gonna do anything. That's how we end up disappointing ourselves. So, okay. yeah. Okay. So my last question. Mm-hmm. My last question is 2023. It's December 3rd today. What does 2023 look like for you? Um, we're just definitely dropping more projects, man. Got a lot more to say, so we definitely gonna keep continuing to put out projects. I think that's just been working for me, like. Um, being consistent, yeah, you know, having people keep continuing to jump on the sound. Of course, like you talked about before, I'm um, putting out some Orange Cardi, uh, Pretty Cardi. I always got merch, so we definitely always got that going. Um, 
But that's really it. You know what I mean? Like, it's really just being consistent. Yeah. Like, we're not switching up nothing. We ain't adding no wow factors. It's just being consistent and giving niggas a way to ride right. on. Right. That's just because that's what works. That's what works. Yeah. I mean, niggas don't give a fuck about shit else but consistency. For you sure. one month. It needs to be done at least in the next two months. Yeah, I agree. I'm not gonna fuck about what you did in January if it's not June. No, yeah, exactly. We forgot about that already. But I definitely agree to that. Okay, last last question. Okay. Last 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 question. Everybody has to give a source box move exclusive. It's some source shit. I have to be the first one to be sourced to whatever the exclusive is. But doesn't have to be nothing close. Doesn't have to be nothing far. Doesn't even have to be nothing related to music. But what is your exclusive? Oh shit, I get exclusive. The next project gonna be called Return Investments. You know what I'm saying? We're dropping at the end of December, <laughs> there you go. December 28th. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. I'm super sure. excited for that. Thank you for the exclusive. Hell yeah. You wanna shout anybody out? Yeah, man. Um, shout out to my girl Dallas. Shout out to Dallas, you know cause I love her green hat. Yeah, man. She came all the way to FY, so yes. I gotta give her salutations. Uh, off top, man. Mm-hmm. Supermodel of the year for me. Okay. And, uh, Quan Johnson. Um, shout out to Book, shout out to damn Orange Cardi, shout out to my peoples and shit back in the cat, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Smooth, shout out to the crew, you feel Thank what I'm you. saying? We always, you know, doing good things, man. I love fucking with y'all for sure. No, for real. Anytime you come down to NY, please let us know. You feel me? We'll do this as many times as you want to do this, you feel me? Facts. We'll show you around the city, for real, for real. So, thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you for flying in and literally just sitting down to touch down with me. I'm very grateful for that. Can't wait to continue to support you. You feel me? I'm super excited for the next project, the project after that, the next collections, and just anything that you got going on. You feel me? It's lifelong. You feel me? So, keep this move shit going. You feel me? Keep the numbers going up. Keep, you know, your fucking creativity and everything up in the air. You feel me? Thank you. None besides good vibes. I gotta let y'all know, this is the first time, like, we meeting, for real. Like, yeah. we met literally, like, an hour ago, if that. So, yeah. I'm definitely grateful for the time spent, for Hell real. Yeah. Like, blessings and salutations sent to you always. Um, shout out to your manager for contacting me. Because, yeah, Donnie you know, B. Shout out to Donnie, for real, because I've been in communication with Donnie. Um, he helped me, you know, lock things in, so I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Um, you know, blessings and salutations sent always. Yes. I will see you next Likewise. time. Hell yeah. This is another episode of Source on SourceBlastMove.com, exclusively on SourceBlastMove.com. Make sure that you source yourself to Pretty Cartier. Yeah. Exclusive um, content rolling on SourceBlastMove.com. Subscribe, like, follow. Follow me at Source Vice Move and where can we follow you? Yeah, man, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Pretty Bardier, P R E T T Y B A R T I E R. Okay. Yeah. I safety.